All right, so we've been working on our value and form unit. We started off with some value scales. This is the gradient scale, or also called a gradual shading scale, where you're going from dark to light very gradually. And then the stepped one is where each one has a step, and each one is a different value. All right. Then we did the cube. We started with a square, added the diagonal lines to make it look 3D, filled in the back with parallel lines to the front lines, and then did the shading, making one side darker than the other so that the light source looks like it's coming from that side and making a shadow over here. Then we did the pyramid, which is all it was is a triangle. We added that diagonal line again like this and shaded that side darker because that's blocking the light. And then the cylinder was a little trickier, and I was kind of looking at it as I probably should have darkened this up a little bit more, but it still has a, the right effect. All right, so you were supposed to either oop, turn this over and, and draw these again, just these three, last week. Hopefully you guys did that. Or you could grab yourself a new paper, which I'm going to grab myself a new paper here. Now, I've got a paper. If it's got a lot of wrinkles, you don't want to do shading with that. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. So, you should have, like I said, lines like that. One in the middle this way, one in the middle that way. And you should have copied these three on your own. Try them on your own to see how they came out on your own. Now today we're going to go ahead and do a sphere. This is the harder one. Once again, Light Source is going to be on the left side today. So when I make a circle, and it's hard when you're at the edge of a table sometimes, I try to use my whole arm to get a, a, a circular motion before I put my circle down. Nice and fluid. If you sit there and try to do it really really slow it might work for you but most of the time faster is better there we go not bad for a first try there we go focus in all right so for shading the sphere you can't draw any lines or something and try to make it look 3d you have to actually shade it that's the only time on, on these shapes where you're gonna have to shade it in order to make it 3d Obviously the shadow is going to be on this side, but we'll talk about that in a minute, which means the roundness of us is blocking more light on this side away from this light source. All right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start here very lightly, kind of similar to the similar uh, to the cylinder is that you're going to start on the edge here and it's going to get skinnier as you go up. Now, I don't have a nice flat spot yet on this. I'm trying to stay away from the end of my pencil here. Real gentle shading at first. The bottom. And then it's going to go to a little sliver of uh, shading all the way to this side. So it's almost like you're trying to shade in a crescent moon shape. Now we're going to do the same thing we did with the cylinder. We're going to skip a little area and then start shading again over here. Now we will come back and fill that in. That's our reflected light again. Now on this one you can actually continue that, um, that moon shape. You're going to leave a moon shape and also make a moon shape. A crescent shape that is and the trick about this one is that you have to do your shading in circular motions instead of going up and down like the other ones you could shade it up and down but you'd have to pay attention where you're pushing down so that it looks like it's round you might as well just shade in a circular motion because a, a sphere or a ball or whatever is circular in shape Now I said we we're going to come back and darken all this up. So now from now on, we're going to go 
um, gradual shading all the way to right about here. So if you look right here real quick, this area right in here is going to, we're going to leave that one uh, with no shading. So that means it's going to be the white of the paper. And that's going to be our highlight. That's where we see the most light bouncing off from the light source off the sphere into our eyeball. Yes, that's how we see things. Light bounces off and in, goes in our eyeball. So I'm going to very lightly keep shading. And you can also shade this edge very lightly too. Sometimes your light source is so bright and that it makes uh, like a white ball or whatever it makes it really really light on the edges and it disappears into a white background like say you had a ball a white ball against the white um, wall you might not see some of the edges if you have a really bright light all right so it might be hard to see what I'm doing I'm just trying to lightly work my way towards that highlight I don't want to go too dark because I want to be able to fix things as I go and like I said I don't have a very good flat spot on my pencil yet I'm trying to go really slowly so I don't mess it up now what you have to learn how to do here while doing shading is you need to be able to look and see where your pencil marks are where the dark like sometimes there's a little texture on your table or even the paper has texture that you can end up seeing so right in here like I said I'm going to surround that and leave it white in the middle here notice I'm doing circles around that highlight area very very lightly it almost looks like I'm not doing anything because I'm going so lightly and I keep going over it and over it and over it and over it and over it again just to make sure that I got some nice layering effects and make everything fairly even looking. Now, normally you wouldn't see a line here at all when you're when you're drawing real things. That's just something we do when we draw because it's easier to see things. Now, we need to go back and darken up this edge slightly. So I'm going to point my pencil just a little bit and darken up just the edge of the sphere and this is a good chance if you didn't quite make it as round as you thought you could kind of fill it in where you thought it should be rounder or sticking out more but still try to keep it so it looks like it's going from dark to light so instead of a line you just want it to look like an edge now this is reflected light looks like I got my finger on it again and it kind of filled it in which is fine because that's actually what I wanted to do a little bit so I'm going to shade that in a little bit I don't want you to smudge on purpose though and I don't want that that uh, reflected light to go away completely and I'm going to darken everything up just a little bit more on this side make this crescent shape over here a little more prominent Now if you have a dull pencil like I do, you can always come back in with your eraser and sharpen up that edge a little bit. Gonna blend this in a little better here. Now I had someone the other day using a marker or a... Maybe it was a pen, I don't remember. While we were doing some drawing, I was thinking, you can't draw with a marker and be able to erase anything. So, But there is a way to, to do what's called cross-hatching to get the similar effect. It's a little harder because you have to do more and more lines and figure out. You have to think ahead and see where are these lines going to go to help me make the form pop out and you basically when you do cross hatching you're making lines like this in one direction and then you come back in and do the other direction 
and that's how you get your values. So if you put a lot of them closer together, it looks darker. If you spread them out, it looks lighter. But that's not what we're doing today. Usually I try to do cross hatching when you're in fifth grade. But you can even do scribble cross hatching. Now, like I said, I've got a little smudge in here. I should, probably should have had a scrap piece of paper. I'm just going to carefully erase that edge right there. That's the other thing. While you're shading so lightly, you're able to re, um, erase fairly well. As long as you didn't get too crazy and push down too hard. Most of the time, these things erase pretty good. Now, I don't know what happened there. What did I get? Did I smudge that accidentally? See, that's the trick here. If you do that smudging or erasing, then you have to come back and fix it and blend it in. There we go. Now you should still be able to see my reflected light right about here. And that's technically like almost like underneath the shape the the sphere because of the roundness of it. This is sticking out towards us. That is actually underneath. Where's that reflected light coming from? It's coming from the ground around it. So speaking of the ground, now we need to figure out our shading. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna darken this up right here about that much from here to here and that's where the sphere is touching the ground or, or the table wherever the sphere is sitting that we decided to draw this could be an orange or it could be an apple or something obviously it would have a different shape and now I'm going to start shading out now, since the light's coming this way, you got a picture that this is blocking, so it's not it's only going to come about that far. And then some of the shadow is going to be behind it because of the round object. And then we're going to make an oval shape that comes out. Probably right about here. So now I'm going to make it a little bit lighter as it's going away from the shape. And of course it also depends at the angle of the light what kind of shape of shadow you have. So I'm going to darken up right here next to that dark area I made. I'm going to darken that up so it doesn't look like a line. Because we want it to look like a shadow. The more I darken it up the more believable it becomes. And then I gotta touch up little areas where I made pencil marks too much. I'm gonna round this out just a little bit more out here in front. There we go. And then I'm gonna blend it in a little better so that it the shadow is more consistently shaded. There we go. A little rounder up here, I think. There we go. And this is our fourth and final object we're shading on this unit. And the only thing is, is that you have filled up all your paper, most likely. Um, so I want you to practice this one on your own again, because the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. I'm not saying practice makes perfect, because I don't believe in that. I believe practice makes better. Perfect. i got a flat area there, so I've just got to touch up a few things. And that's what the other thing you have to learn to, to just look 
at your drawing and see where it might need a little more blending to get rid of some lines. And you can also do that squinting method I was talking about where you just kind of close your eyelids a little bit and make it's like you're looking through your eyelashes and it looks kind of blurry but it also makes things stand out somehow. You can tell, oh, I need some shading here. This this darkness is not dark enough because it's lighter here than it is over here. So I want to make that darker over here still. It's a very delicate, time-consuming thing. 